the Thanksgiving Day killers who were anything but grateful. Christopher Gaddis Thanksgiving fell on November 23, 2017. Christopher Gaddis and his wife Jeanette celebrated the holiday with Candace Candy Kunz and Andrew Buthorn, Jeanette's daughter and her boyfriend. Candy's mom and stepfather had invited them to celebrate the holiday with them. However, Christopher Gaddis started to think his stepdaughter was overstaying her welcome. When Jeanette and Christopher met in high school in the 1970s, they did not date. Several years later, they reconnected at a school reunion and started a romantic relationship. The couple's friends described them as opposites. While Jeanette was outgoing and fun, Christopher was quiet and introverted. All indications were that Jeanette and Christopher were happy. However, some people were unaware of Christopher's dark side. After a newspaper dropped on his lawn, Christopher threw it through the delivery man's car window. Following that, Christopher flashed a box cutter and threatened him with a knife. Prior to his marriage to Jeanette, Christopher had been married once before, but they had no children. He didn't have to share his wife's love and affection with anyone else in that relationship. While Candy was staying with them, Christopher was bothered by the fact that she took up half of Jeanette's attention. After Candy's murder, friends said that she never complained about Christopher. From Candy's Facebook posts, all her friends assumed the family was doing well. Her relationship with Christopher and her mother changed over the course of her stay with them in November 2017. Christopher told Andrew and Candy they could visit for a few days before Thanksgiving. By the time the holiday came around, the couple had been there longer than Christopher had liked. Jeanette secretly recorded a conversation among Christopher, Candy, and Andrew in which he expressed his distress at their visit. Whenever Christopher became unreasonable about Candy's presence, Jeanette began recording their interaction. Christopher attacked Jeanette while playing a board game with his nephew two days before Thanksgiving. It was clear Christopher had been drinking when he stormed into the room and demanded Candy and Andrew leave. When Jeanette stood up to calm her inebriated husband down, Christopher pushed her. He then raised his hand as if to strike Jeanette. His nephew intervened, and Christopher settled down. Fearing for her family's safety, Jeanette gave her nephew Christopher's gun. Jeanette was unaware that her husband owned more than one gun. Christopher's anger toward Candy, Andrew, and Jeanette grew over the next two days. The more alcohol he drank, the angrier he became. By Thanksgiving, he was seething. Around 6 o'clock p.m. on Thanksgiving, Christopher started a fight with Candy and Andrew. Candy and Andrew were in the hot tub when he approached them again about their stay. When Jeanette heard Christopher yelling from inside, she came out to record it. Then he turned his anger toward Jeanette as she walked outside. That evening, Around 9.30 p.m., Christopher began sending Jeanette an odd series of text messages. Christopher's strange texts read, Please let me live, and I am scared for my life. He wrote other bizarre texts, I just want to live, please, and stop scaring me, please. Assuming Christopher had finally fallen asleep, Jeanette, Candy, and Andrew began playing a board game at 11.15 p.m. Christopher wasn't sleeping. He was lying in wait. In the kitchen, he surprised the trio with his pistol. They tried to flee, but Christopher's gun was faster. <laughs> Jeanette was shot first, then Candy, but Andrew made it out of the house. Christopher caught up to Andrew, shooting him three times. Someone called the police from the Gaddis family's security system around 11.27 p.m. By 11.30, they were on the scene of what looked like a massacre. When the police arrived, Christopher was near Andrew's body on his porch. In the body camera footage, Christopher is captured, claiming Andrew attacked him, and he had to kill everyone to defend himself. On November 23, 2017, Jeanette, Candy, and Andrew died. Candy's body suffered the most severe injuries, with several gunshot wounds to her face, neck, torso, and stomach. Investigators found the video Jeanette had recorded earlier from the hot tub incident while Candy and Andrew were in it. One of the most chilling discoveries was the recording of the murder that detectives found on Candy's smartphone. As Christopher reached the bottom of the stairs, she began recording him before he started shooting. This video showed Andrew begging for his life and Christopher shooting him cold-bloodedly. Following Christopher's arrest, his church suspended him without pay as a pastor. He was eventually terminated. Christopher Gaddis pleaded guilty to the triple homicide. His sentence for each murder was 100 years. He will be dead by the time he is eligible for parole. Paul Michael Marriage In 2009, 
Paul Michael Marriage spent Thanksgiving at his cousin Jim Sitton's house in Jupiter, Florida. The problem was Jim didn't know Paul was coming to dinner. Yet Paul's parents were invited to Jim and his wife Muriel's house for dinner. Carol Marriage and Michael Marriage were looking forward to visiting their niece Muriel and nephew Jim over the holiday. Also invited were their twin daughters Carla and Lisa and Lisa's husband Patrick. Muriel, Jim's wife, also asked her parents for Thanksgiving dinner. Despite everyone's excitement, Michaela, Jim, and Muriel's six-year-old daughter looked forward to the holiday the most. Even though Paul wasn't invited, he was eager to attend his cousin's Thanksgiving dinner. Paul checked in with his parents constantly in the days leading up to the holiday to see if they'd changed their plans. Carol and Michael, Paul's parents, didn't tell Jim and Muriel that Paul was coming to Thanksgiving dinner. Muriel and Jim hadn't seen Paul in over 10 years, and Paul didn't have a close relationship with any of his family. Even so, he could barely contain his excitement for Thanksgiving at the Sitton residence. Throughout his life, Paul struggled with mental health problems. When he was 19, his depression intensified and he began gaining weight and losing hair. Paul was jealous of his sisters and frequently expressed his desire to kill them. He filed a restraining order against Carla in his late 20s, but later dismissed it. Several years later, Carla filed a protective order against Paul, claiming he had threatened to kill her. Within a few weeks, she withdrew her claim. Paul arrived at Muriel and Jim's house about half an hour after dinner had begun. During dinner, he acted strangely and didn't eat. Afterward, everyone gathered in the living room to play the piano and sing songs. Having been practicing her nutcracker role for weeks, Michaela put on an impromptu performance. While Michaela was the center of attention, Paul sulked to the side. After everyone had finished singing, Paul walked to his car and retrieved a gun. Paul began shooting when he returned to Muriel and Jim's home. He fired the weapon at his sisters Lisa and Carla first. They died due to their injuries. Lisa was pregnant. Her unborn child died as well. After shooting his brother-in-law in the stomach, he shot Muriel's mother twice, killing her with the second shot. Then Paul killed six-year-old Michaela, the most innocent of them all. Paul shot the little girl twice as she slept in Tinkerbell pajamas. Before this night, Michaela had never met Paul Neither she nor he knew the other existed. The bodies were discovered long after Paul had disappeared. An arrest warrant was issued for Paul on November 28, 2009. As the FBI joined the search for Paul in December, Jim Sitton appeared on America's Most Wanted, begging for assistance. In the Florida Keys, owners of a motel recognized Paul Marriage's picture from that night's episode of America's Most Wanted. On January 2, 2010, authorities raided Paul's room at Edgewater Lodge. Paul entered a not guilty plea due to his sanity. To avoid the death penalty, Paul took a plea deal. Upon pleading guilty, he was sentenced to seven life terms. Joel Guy Jr. On November 26, 2016, Joel Guy Jr. and his family celebrated Thanksgiving at his parents' home in Knoxville, Tennessee. The holiday was bittersweet for his father this year because he had just retired, sold their house, and was preparing to move. After over 30 years of marriage, Lisa and Joel Guy Sr. had only one child. Joel Sr. had three daughters from a previous marriage who were older than their brother Joel Jr. Lisa and Joel said their final goodbyes to their daughters after a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner with their family. The following day, Joel Jr. was expected to return to Baton Rouge where he attended Louisiana State University and studied plastic surgery. At least, that's what his parents thought. Joel Jr. had dropped out of college the year before. He lived in a messy apartment and supported himself with the school money his parents gave him. Having decided to retire, Joel and Lisa realized they could no longer provide their son with money. They planned to inform Joel Jr. after Thanksgiving dinner that they would no longer support him financially. Whether Lisa and Joel ever spoke with their son that evening is unclear. After Thanksgiving, Lisa didn't show up for work, which concerned her co-workers. It was Lisa's last day of work before retirement, and her co-workers were alarmed when she failed to show up. The police soon conducted a welfare check on Lisa and Joel Guy's home. Upon arriving at Lisa and Joel Guy's residence, the police noticed ice cream and other food sitting on the floor in the foyer. As authorities walked around the back of the house, they smelt a chemical odor. When investigators entered the home, 
it was scorching hot. The thermostat was set to 90 degrees. On the counter, officers found Joel and Lisa's wallets and a sledgehammer. Officers found a pot boiling on the stovetop in the kitchen. Upon lifting the lid, officers found Lisa Guy's decapitated head inside the boiling water. After finding Lisa's head, one responding officer vomited all over the floor. After hearing a dog upstairs, police followed the sound to a locked door where they found the terrified animal. Blood was evident on the walls of the upstairs hallway. Continuing down the hall, the investigators found Joel Guy's dismembered hands in the middle of a large blood stain. The bodies of Lisa and Joel were found in their bathroom, stuffed into two plastic bins. The home was so toxic that anyone entering the premises had to wear a hazmat suit. Joel Jr. was the only suspect in the brutal murder of his parents. After placing him under surveillance for a few days, police arrested him in Baton Rouge on November 29, 2016. He was arrested as he entered his car. Officers discovered a meat grinder in the trunk of his car. The prosecution alleges that Joel Jr. stabbed his father with such force that he severely damaged his ribs. Furthermore, the prosecution told the jury that Joel Jr. inflicted over 20 severe injuries on his mother. Detectives found Joel Jr.'s notebook inside Lisa and Joel's home, which detailed his gruesome plan. Joel Jr. wrote in his notebook to remember to bring a food processor and meat grinder. He wrote a note that said, flush chunks down the toilet. During Joel Jr.'s trial, prosecutors presented receipts showing he bought the chemicals used to dissolve his parents' bodies at a Knoxville Walmart. During the violent assault on Lisa and Joel, Joel Jr. inflicted injuries on himself. Walmart security footage shows Joel Jr. purchasing Band-Aids and antibiotic ointment after the murder. Prosecutors presented over 700 pieces of evidence during the trial, including testimony from nearly 30 witnesses. The judge presiding over Joel Jr.'s trial sentenced him to life in prison on October 2, 2020. Joel Jr. will be eligible for release in 100 and 30 years. Before Joel was taken to jail, the judge told him that even a life sentence would not have sufficed to punish the abuse he had inflicted upon his parents. So there you have it. Tell us your craziest or most interesting Thanksgiving stories in the comments below. If you found this video intriguing, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more heartbreaking stories. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next video.